over here. So, the time has come, and there's no time to lose. You need to go buy a graphics card right now. Well, no, I actually don't think so. So anyway, I'd just like to give a little bit of a background into why I think that this is the case. I think uh, I, uh, this is a reaction video to uh, Jay's Two Cents video on the need to purchase a graphics card now or you will not have an option to do it in the near future. Um, I think a little bit overreacting. So, I mean, we've had quantitative easing under the pandemic, which means that lots of governments have flushed a lot of extra cash and even checks to people around the world which has caused a lot of extra um, credit to be available around in different areas. And then we got the war in Ukraine, and then that messed even more with the supply chain than what the pandemic uh, has. So we have restrictions in the um, supply chain side of things. And all these two things combined and other factors have led to... Um, an increase in inflation and even in those countries or regions which thought they had this situation under control. And and this is where I think that um, Jay's two cents goes a little bit off the rails. As he does. I don't think he takes into account the macroeconomic factors that are driving graphics cards prices and their purchases. Um, one of the aspects that will happen now is that so to the main medicine to get inflation under control is to tighten the financial situation to reduce the amount of cash that's available in the market and that's usually done by central banks increasing the interest rates which will then have a roll-on effect that it will go down to yeah normal people's credit cards and the interest rate they pay on their um, housing also, there will be, uh, it also has an effect that there will be new credit limits when you tighten down the economy. There will be um, limits to the amount of money that people can actually borrow and have on credit. And then if you want to take on new credit, then suddenly you might be faced with the fact that they will actually decline new credit when it used to be like, oh, I'll just take another $1,000 and, and um, that's done with it, but um, I might actually turn around that they might, financial institutions may be forced to say, no, you're too much of a risk, we, you've already borrowed too much from us, so <laughs> we don't want you borrowing anymore. And, um, you know, as everybody's noticed, the cost of living uh, mix, and um, this is um, primarily the impacts on energy, which is gasoline, you know, fuel you need to heat um, and cook. And then food, of course. So this is going to restructure the economy of very many families, or even individuals. And um, another big thing is that, it, which has been interesting to me, is also that it's, um, we've had a very large fail failure of uh, cryptocurrencies. So this has been a test period. Uh, you know, many had said that cryptocurrencies is the best bet to survive. Um, you know, unstable world situations, but obviously it's been the completely opposite since uh, quantitative tightening has come in and the amount of money available in, in the economy in general has been going down and the first place that it seems that people have pulled their money is um, from uh, cryptocurrencies. So that doesn't seem to be a very good bet um, in terms of securing um, wealth for the future. Uh, and, and all of these factors will lead to the fact that the consumer will, expenditure will be reevaluated. So I don't think that, generally speaking, the population will be so interested in spending um, whatever for a graphics card. Either that they, they can't get financing for it, or they have to reprioritize their um, expenditure just to be able to survive and live. Um, now, if we look at the situation from the product perspective, graphics cards in general, then, um, you know, since crypto mining is no longer profitable, so, and they were the primary customers for high-end graphics cards across the board. So lots of those um, farms, and they are farms, there's literally hundreds or even thousands of graphics cards in, in those data center setups or farm setups 
they're being um, abandoned and um, the components are being recycled. So more and more of that stuff will flow into the second-hand market. And then we come down to, you know, Jay's two cents evaluation of the um, Series 4000 that it's going to be astronomically expensive. I actually don't think so because it's going to be pushed out in a completely different circumstance. I mean, there, 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 there is no longer the um, cryptocurrency farm market for them to fill with their, with their product. And they're still stuck with revenue targets, which were probably decided quite a while ago before the full extent of all this quantitative tightening um, was coming evident. And they still are stuck with their volume targets. And, and one reason they're stuck with their volume targets is that, yeah, they need to get revenue. And then um, they also have booked um, chip manufacturing capacity. And, and that was probably done a very much, a very long time ago also, so based on a completely different financial scenario. So um, my recommendation, in general, taking into account the financial um, instability, instability and um, the possible crash that NVIDIA and other technology companies are going to go into when it comes to the graphics card market, I would think that hold off until at least um, next January. I, uh, yeah. So in, and in my opinion, the, the the prices are going to go down, and they're going to go down a lot. Uh, so really, <laughs> to buy a graphics card now, it's. I mean, it's not insane. If 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 you are building a, a, a building a PC and and you're missing a graphics card, yeah, okay. It, it is a much better market to buy a graphics card right now, but still, I, if you can live without it or live live a, you know another six months with a little bit more low end card and then wait for what comes on the market, then then I would suggest um, doing that. So I think Jay's two cents jumped. Uh, I do respect him. I follow his channel continuously. I, I, I like his output, but this the, the, this time I think it was a little bit overboard. <laughs> and and I think that it's primarily because he's ignoring the um, economic realities of the world and and how it's affecting how it will affect um, the in individuals and families' economies over the next six months. So I think that'll that'll be the main impact on on the profile of these graphics ah, 4000 series or otherwise being picked up but I, I think from a consumer perspective we're looking for looking at it's it's going to be good times when it comes to graphics cards just hold out um, you know I, I, I disagree with uh, Jay's two cents when he says that you're going to lose out if you don't act now I, I totally don't understand where that comes from uh, that I think is the uh, yeah, we'll see who's going to be right, but um, I think that, um, yeah, that, that's where I disagree with Jay's two cents. No, it's not the best time to buy a graphic card, and waiting six months is not going to hurt at all. It's actually probably going to be a much better situation in the next six months. But anyway, I hope you liked this one. Um, if you did, um, consider hitting the like button. Um, Subscribe if you'd like to join my content on a more continuous basis and um, you can buy me a cup of coffee if you think it was worth a cup of coffee and um, merch is also available in the comments and um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. I'll, I'll I think I'll make a follow-up video maybe. See, see who was right in January next year. <laughs> see you in the next one.